Hello friends, this is Dr. Rajal Shah. Today I use an unknown interesting case format as a springboard to bring up my topic of presentation. Uh, this case was from a 58 year old male who presented with an elevated PSA of 11 nanogram per ml and palpable nodules on digital rectal examination. He subsequently presented with urinary obstruction and underwent transurethral resection of prostate. So in this TURP specimen, we are seeing here multiple cellular nodules. These nodules appear to be relatively circumscribed. That's an important feature I want to bring up. Again, at little closer examination, you can see the sharp circumscription of these very cellular nodules. At high magnification, this nodule is made up of some well-formed glands, numerous poorly formed glands. There are single cells. There are also cells that appear to have signatory cell type appearance. And also notice here the presence of very cellular spindly stroma. Uh, you can also see some blue mucin in some of these glands. And also notice the stroma surrounding these glands appear to be very highly nice and eosinophilic. So the typical differential diagnosis in this type of case would include prostate adenocarcinoma grade group 4, grade group 5, benign sclerosing adenosis and metastatic adenocarcinoma. So this case brings up an important topic of uh, benign mimics of prostate cancer which present with fuse gland, nest or single cell type of pattern mimicking high grade prostate cancer. So this is my last presentation on the series of benign mimics of prostate cancer. And uh, in this particular topic, there are five important conditions that can present with this type of high grade potential morphology, which includes sclerosing adenosis, nonspecific granulomatous prostatitis, paraganglion, malacoplakia, and xanthoma or xanthomatous inflammation. Before you review this video presentation, I would highly encourage you again to review the part one, which is the general approach towards the diagnosis of benign mimics of prostate cancer that will provide you some foundational framework to understand this particular presentation. So let us get back to our case. And as I emphasize here, you have multiple cellular spindly strom uh, nodules at low power magnification, but a very important feature to appreciate here is these very sharply circumscribed cellular nodules. Again, you can appreciate this sharp circumscription, very, very important feature to appreciate. At a higher magnification, again, notice this very cellular spindly stroma like BPH type of stroma. And when you see this type of stroma, you always think about proliferative benign conditions. The stroma surrounding these glands also has this highly nice appearance. But note here that if you miss the low power appearance and jump directly to high power magnification, this lesion can be very easily misclassified as prostate adenocarcinoma grade group 4 or 5 because you have numerous poorly formed glands, compressed glands, signatory cell type cells, blue mucin, and then even single cells. So this is a great mimicker of high prostate cancer uh, condition. Uh, when I did P63 basal cell marker, majority of glands lighted up. I also performed S100 stain, which also demonstrated a strong staining surrounding these glands. And I will talk a little bit about that later on. So the diagnosis of this case is sclerosing adenosis. Here is another case. You can see beautiful resemblance to poorly formed uh, or poorly differentiated prostate cancer. But if we again uh, notice this presence of cellular spindly stroma, then that's a very helpful feature to appreciate. Another feature that you can very nicely see in this example is this highly nice uh, 
uh, spindly, uh, uh, highly nice uh, eosinophilic stroma, which is even better appreciated in this image. Again, in this case, very, very important that a feature that you see here is this sharp circumscription uh, of uh, this particular lesion. So sclerosing adenosis is typically limited to the transition zone. It is a form of a benign prostatic hyperplasia. So typically seen as an incidental finding in a TARP specimen or radical prostatectomy specimen. An important point to keep in mind is that when you have presence of one or multiple cellular nodules which mimic as high grade prostate cancer in the transition zone, that should always alert you for the diagnosis of benign sclerosing adenosis. And an interesting phenomenon that happens in this case is that basal cells undergo myoepithelial cell differentiation. So smooth muscle actin and S100 myoepithelial markers are going to be positive in this case. And basal cells are also typically positive. So keep this particular condition in your uh, differential when you are dealing with uh, this type of situation, a very, very important condition not to be misdiagnosed as a high-grade prostate cancer. Next, we move to case number two. Uh, in this case, you can see here that you have this relatively very poorly preserved uh, specimen showing very basophilic appearing cellular infiltrate. This cellular infiltrate is kind of hugging around this benign prostatic glands. You can also see some uh, debris within the lumen of the gland. So when you have poor preservation like this type of example, this can be a great mimicker of a high grade prostate cancer grade group 5. But when we start looking at little more carefully, you can see that this infiltrate is made up of somewhat of mixed type of inflammatory infiltrate. You have some epithelioid type of giant cells here. And also you do see uh, in some other areas, this presence of uh, cellular debris, eosinophils, mixed inflammatory infiltrate, and the process is concentrated around these ducts. And if you have more fluorid example like this, then presence of these multinucleated giant cells and granulomas are further reassuring that you are dealing with this benign uh, inflammatory process. So the diagnosis of this case is nonspecific granulomatous prostatitis. An important thing to keep in mind regarding this uh, particular condition is that this can also mimic a cancer both clinically as well as on imaging studies. And if you have a poorly preserved sample like the case I showed you, image, a first image that I showed you, it can easily mislead you towards high-grade prostate cancer diagnosis. And prostate often feels, feels firm or hard on digital rectal examination. PSA can be frequently elevated and you may encounter PSA even in range of 30 to 40 nanogram per ml. So this is a great mimicker of prostate cancer, but when you look at the morphology carefully, you can uh, confidently make your diagnosis. This condition can also mimic with infectious processes. In infectious granulomatous prostatitis, granulomas are kind of uh, hugging uh, uh, in the uh, around the glands, but they are typically not cornered or not kind of always concentrated around the glands. Glands appear a lot more cleaner rather than those discoaminated inflammatory and epithelial debris that you see in nonspecific granulomatous prostatitis. And granulomas in infectious processes are also much well formed and you may also encounter necrosis. So when I see this type of process, I always do special stains to confirm or rule out the possibility of uh, infectious process. Cultures can also be important. But if you are dealing with a non-specific granulomatous prostatitis, 
spatial stains often does not yield any uh, uh, kind of further information. Uh, this next case is a very interesting uh, process. You can see this uh, little bit haphazard proliferation of these very pale uh, cells with very bubbly type of cytoplasm. These cells, you will agree that they mimic like xanthoma type of cells. The nuclei are small and bland appearing. Here, little closer mag magnification. Again, you can notice the bland cytological appearance of these cells and notice this bubbly cytoplasm. Little bit more closer examination. When I did uh, CD68, these cells lighted up. So this is a, a, a condition which we call xanthoma or xanthomatous infiltration. It is relatively infrequent, but it can very importantly mimic with the poorly differentiated foamy gland prostate adenocarcinoma. So some of the helpful features here is a relatively bland appearance, but keep in mind that foamy gland adenocarcinoma can also have a relatively bland cytological features. Presence of mixed infl inflammatory infiltrate is a useful feature. And in po poorly differentiated foamy gland prostate adenocarcinoma, you will have at least focal glandular differentiation. When you deal with this type of situation, it is a, a good idea to do both CD68 and cytokeratin to support your so here is an example of poorly differentiated foamy gland adenocarcinoma and you can see that at cellular level this is a great mimicker of xanthomatous infiltration. Here helpful features are rather infiltrative process, focal glandular differentiation and perineural invasion that you can appreciate. Uh, this uh, seen at higher magnification. Again, relatively bland cytological features, but nuclei do appear hyperchromatic. And this particular process was cytokeratin positive and CD68 negative. So always think about these two differential when you deal with something like this. This is another example, which I recently encountered in prostate biopsy. And this one is relatively haphazard proliferation, but helpful feature here is a mixed inflammatory infiltrate and this was CD68 positive and CK negative. This is CD68 supporting the diagnosis of xanthomatous inflammation. Malacoplakia is a somewhat related type of condition morphologically. It is characterized by sheet-like proliferation of epithelioid histiocytes with abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm. And again, you typically see admixture of inflammatory cells uh, in the process and this uh, importantly has intracytoplasmic targetoid Michaelis Gutmann bodies which is a characteristic finding and these bodies are typically PAS positive and iron and copper stain are also positive if you want to confirm your diagnosis and CD68 will light up these epithelioid histiocytes and cytokeratin is negative. This is relatively very infrequent condition typically seen in hollow organs and is considered to be a, a chronic uh, process to uh, gram negative organisms that you often find in urinary tract and some other uh, hollow cavities of the body. So here is a nice example of malacoplakia. Notice this mixed inflammatory infiltrate. Again, notice this very epithelioid histiocytes with very prominent eosinophilic cytoplasm. Within these cells, you do find some like kidney shaped or little grooves suggesting the histiocytic nature of cells. And the characteristic finding here is this Michaelis Goodman bodies, which are like this targetoid inclusion like structures. So uh, very uh, important to recognize and not to confuse it with poorly differentiated prostate carcinoma. This is a very interesting case that I encountered recently in a radical prostatectomy specimen. Patient had a high grade prostate cancer in the main uh, specimen. 
So I think a typical thinking process is that I think you are dealing with a poorly differentiated nodule which is sitting here within the fat of the periprostatic tissue. So a, a, a kind of typical uh, jerk reaction would be that you are dealing with an extra prostatic extension of a high grade prostate cancer. So uh, a very important feature to appreciate here is that these cells are made up of clear to mildly eosinophilic cytoplasm. And notice here that you have very delicate uh, organoid vasculature. So that's a very, very important feature to appreciate, which you can even better appreciate at a higher magnification. But if you fail to appreciate this uh, organoid nature of this process, like a gel ball and like appearance, then again, this can be a great mimicker of high grade prostate cancer in radical prostatectomy specimens. You may all often end up calling this extra prostatic extension. So the diagnosis for this case is paraganglion. They are typically seen in periprostatic space associated with neurovascular bundles. So they are more laterally seen in the radical prostatectomy specimens. And the hallmark feature is this microscopic collection of clusters or nest of cells with clear to eosinophilic cytoplasm within delicate vasculature pattern. So this is typically an incidental finding, microscopic uh, collection is an important to distinguish it from a full-blown paraganglioma. Paraganglioma would typically will present as a nodule by itself. And if you are in doubt, PSA will be negative, neuroendocrine markers are positive, S100 will be positive in sustentacular cells pattern. And as I said, your typical differential diagnosis that you don't want to kind of uh, uh, go in the wrong direction is the high-grade prostate cancer and extra prostatic extension. So here is a nice example in needle biopsy. Again, you see this kind of collection of these cells in a uh, little bit delicate vasculature uh, type of pattern within this fat space. So very easy to overinterpret as an extra prostatic extension and high grade prostate cancer. So that brings up uh, uh, all uh, points that I wanted to discuss regarding this high grade pattern. I would also encourage you as a part of this series review the part two, which is the small gland pattern mimicking low grade prostate cancer. Uh, another very important pattern which can also mimic high-grade prostate cancer is the large cribriform glandular pattern which uh, importantly can mimic as central zone. So the important conditions in this particular pattern which can mimic with high-grade prostate cancer include central zone glands, clear cell cribriform hyperplasia and basal cell hyperplasia. And we have devoted two separate video was on this particular topic. So I highly encourage you to review those as well. Diagnostic approach to prostate cribriform lesions given by Dr. Ming Zhao. And then I have also a whole presentation on intraductal proliferation of prostate where I speak about this cribriform pattern in detail as well. So with that note, I thank you for your attention. If you like this video, please like it, share with your friends and subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much for your attention.